and this is related to another question we had. There are three questions in this. So we're on number two. Is starting them back at the basics and learning phonograms wrong? They are struggling with reading and I don't want to keep changing things up for fear of burning them out. So the key phrase there is struggling with reading. If they're struggling with reading, yeah, you have to go back and do the phonics. When you are doing the phonics, uh, you're teaching them the code that they need to crack the, these words on the page. If you don't go back and teach them the code, they'll continue. Um, that, they'll continue to struggle. <laughs> There's a really big truck coming by in just a minute here. Uh, it's, either, it's either a mud truck with, you know, like the big wheels and no muffler, or a gravel truck. <laughs> or a turf truck. Turf truck. Turf truck. <clears throat> That's more of Charles City's topsoil going off the <laughs> suburbs in Williamsburg. Okay, uh, where were we? <laughs> Learning phonographs. Oh, right. Yes. Okay, so what burns a child out on reading is that continual struggle. Always feeling like they're guessing at the words. It's tiring. It's exhausting. You can't relax and uh, be absorbed in the reading because you're always struggling with the actual words. So it won't burn a child out to go back and do phonograms. Um, it is true that you don't want to keep changing programs. So at this point, get one program and stick to it. Uh, we have a program called the Ordinary Parents Guide to Reading, which is very straightforward, no bells and whistles, no worksheets, no songs. Um, if you want something that's totally frillless and efficient, that's what you would get. There are other programs out there that are equally, you know, valuable for teaching phonograms to older students that have more bells and whistles on them. That choice is up to you. Just pick one program and try to stick with it, um, particularly with older students. Now, related question from Diana, she says, where do I start if my kindergartner already reads and learned to read all by himself? I pulled out the Ordinary Parent's Guide to Teaching Reading as I was looking over it, and he read the titles to me, the vowel A. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how many rules he knows. Did he learn by sight? If we just read to him all the time, what should Diana do now? Whereas with an older child that's struggling, you always have to go back and do the basics again. If you have a kindergartner who is already reading fluently, you don't want to beat to death going back and doing those basic rules again, because they're going to begin to grow bored and frustrated. Here's the challenge. Often a kindergartner who has just begun to, or first grader, who's begun to read on his own um, is very intuitive, has a good ear, has been read to a lot, uh, has figured out maybe what the beginning sounds of the words are and can guess very efficiently at the rest. Sometimes these kids are not actually reading every word. Sometimes they don't know how to read every word. They're just very good at context. What you don't want to do is assume that the child is reading you, uh, as opposed to guessing. That skill will keep them through about third or fourth grade, and there's a well-known phenomenon called the fourth grade slump, which is where students who have been reading all along suddenly start to hate reading, struggle, miss words, not know what they're doing. What's happened there is that child has figured out how to guess very efficiently at, from context at what the words are. But by the time you hit fourth grade, it doesn't work as well because the context becomes less helpful. The literature becomes more difficult, it becomes less predictable, and all of a sudden a student who has this method that's been working very well finds it doesn't work anymore. Because they've never actually learned the phonograms, they can't say to you, mother, I'm having difficulty reading now because I can no longer guess at the context in order to find the meaning of the word. They just, you know, whine and complain and say they don't want to read. So the trick with this child is to go back and give them the phonics without boring them to tears. Generally the best way to do this is to take your phonics program. Uh, Ordinary Parents Guide, again, is a good one to do this with. Um, the phonics Pathways works well for this as well. You want to take your phonics programs and pretend that it's a spelling program. So, you're going to take the first one, you know, where um, A says A, ah, and you're going to open it, and the child's already reading this, obviously, and you're going to say, today we're going to learn a spelling rule. When you hear the sound A, ah, you're going to use the letter A to spell it. And then you go through all the words with them, and then you dictate two or three words to them as spelling words and have them write those words down as long as they're writing fairly easily. Otherwise you can just have them spell out loud. This teaches the kid the rule. A says A. Ah. You're just doing it the other way around. When you hear the sound A, ah, it's represented by the letter A. Still gets them the phonics rules, but it doesn't uh, assume that they don't know how to read. Spelling rules are just phonics rules backwards. 
When you learn in reading that if you see a three letter word that has a vowel in the middle and then you put an E on the end and that lengthens the vowel, that's a spelling rule as well if you teach it the other way. When you hear a long vowel, that word may be spelled with an E on the end. So go back through the phonograms I would with this, this kindergartner who's already reading well, but I would treat it as a spelling program. This mother has a lot of uh, sort of sequential building a little bit at a time work to do. It's difficult to do, especially with older children, because you're always thinking to yourself, look how far behind we are. Let me just encourage you that if you take the time now to build these basic skills, to build uh, the skill of sitting still and working, that the kids are going to be so much better off. And I know you feel like you're behind now, but this is the way to not be behind anymore. You've just got to be patient with yourself and not consistently think to yourself, look how far behind we are, look how far behind we are. You've got to think to yourself, look how far we've come. Uh, and that will help you, I think, to have the patience to stick with it. Okay, so final question then um, from our mom with four kids. She says, what do you do when you're having problems with them sitting still to get their work done? They're having trouble focusing, and I don't want to sound like um, a drill, drill sergeant and have them never want to write because I made them sit up straight and put their feet flat on the floor so their handwriting would be neat. Okay, there's actually two separate questions here. One is, um, how do I get the kid to sit still and get do his work? And the second is, um, should I always make the kid sit up straight and put his feet flat on the floor when he's writing? So the answer to the second question is, well, yes, actually you should, because that's the posture that's going to help them write correctly. But you want to make sure that they're doing an appropriate amount of handwork and bookwork for their age. A nine-year-old should not be writing for every single subject. A nine-year-old should be writing perhaps the equivalent of three to five sentences per day by hand. Um, kids who are coordinated and not struggling can do more, but uh, not a lot more. Their hands get very tired. So the first thing I would do is make sure that you're not overdoing the bookwork. Make sure that everything the kid does is not workbook, writing, fill in the blanks. Make sure that when they're doing history, they have a chance to go over and lie on the sofa and read the history. Then they can get up from the sofa, come over to the table, and write out an answer to a question. So just be aware of how much writing they're doing and make sure they're not overdoing it. Um, when kids are sitting still to get their work done, um, you, need to, you need to work up to this with them. With a 12-year-old, um, I would say to the 12-year-old, you need to sit here at the table for 20 minutes to start with. 20 minutes, work hard for 20 minutes, concentrate, don't fall on the floor, don't drop your pencil, don't get up to get anything to eat, don't talk to me. At the end of the 20 minutes, you can get up, run around, eat something, you know, throw pencils in the air, whatever you want. And then as they get good at the 20 minutes, extend that, you know, three or four minutes at a time. Just remember that sitting still and doing your work is a skill and like any skill, it has to be developed sequentially. You can't just take a kid, plop them in front of a table, and expect them to pay attention for an hour. They have to learn to discipline themselves to sit still. Um.